So hello and welcome to this video where I will talk about building the tire hammer. So I started out a couple of months ago with an idea of building a, my own tire hammer or I've always wanted to build one but I didn't know quite how to do it. So there are a lot of plans out there and you can, that you can get a hold of and I think it's uh, Clay Spencer who made them. I'm not quite sure. You need to fact check this and um, if you follow those you'll be in very good hands. However, I did not follow them. I just watched a couple of pictures and uh, I watched some YouTube videos. I wanted a challenge and uh, a challenge it was. So I want to talk a little bit about what kind of parts you need and how to get them and how much money I spent on this machine. So this hammer is, is basically a scrapyard hammer. Everything you see here is scrap steel. So, or not, well, not everything is scrap steel, but, but most of it is. There's a couple of new things here. The steel for the arms is new. The spring is new. The bolts are new and the threaded rods are new. That's basically it. The rest is reused material or scrap that was going to be thrown away. So uh, that's my mindset when I went into this. So yeah, let's take a look at the different parts and I'll try to explain as clearly as I can what the each part does and how what they do and how to get them. So come with me. Right, so starting off here, this is the mechanics of the hammer. Uh, so how does this work? Well, it, it's like a triangle. You have the ram here and you have arms going sideways and up to a little thing up here. And this holds the ram, the wheel. Uh, I have welded on a, a steel bar here and welded on a, a car axle to that. A little bit uh, down from uh, from the middle which makes it so when so when I spin the wheel this also goes up and down which makes the hammer go up and down basically that's the the principle uh, of this build uh, the spring here is pushing out the arms these arms which uh, because if I didn't have it they will just blah, hang sloppy and the, the ram wouldn't go up and down so these are the spring is essential now I want to clear something out. This kind of type of spring is from a motorcycle, so it's quite heavy duty, but I did have a smaller one at first, a silver one, that wasn't so heavy, and what happened was that that broke during use of this hammer, and that could have been dangerous, so I don't recommend doing this method. If you look at different videos, you'll see that they use a really big one, uh, and just a, the spring, not the, the, that this part of the spring, so that, that might be a, a good idea. So check that out if you're interested. So uh, the thing that I uh, figured out during the time was here I have threaded rods holding the, the ram part. And I have bolts on here holding the upper arms in place. The thing that's smart about that is that I can, if I push the arms closer to the ram, the ram will go higher up. So if I'm working really big stock, I can lower and raise the hammer depending on where I put the outer arms, upper arms on the threaded rod. This is basically the mechanics here. In here I have a, a, a car axle and a bearing system basically holding the, the axle. And the axle is welded onto a steel plate which in turn is welded onto the, the tire. So th this is the arm system. So if we take a look at the, the anvil and the plates here. So what I did with the ram was that I um, I welded on, it's just a square tubing, 10 by 10 centimeters, and I welded on um, maybe an inch steel plate at the bottom, and I also drilled and tapped holes on each side here. Uh, now, if I would have been smart, I would have mirrored the holes, uh, but you'll figure that out as you go about, uh, go about it, but mirror my holes and you will be fine. Uh, that may, uh, makes it possible for me to uh, put on die, different dies, and I can also screw them on with bolts that I have here. So I can change dies. I have a couple of different sets. These are flat dies, and those here are rounding dies for drawing out material faster. So the anvil is a solid piece of steel, uh, round stock. It's um, 15 centimeters in diameter, so it's quite heavy. It was very hard to lift, uh, it weighs a couple of hundred kilos, so try to find something that's very solid. Uh, you don't want to, uh, because first I thought, hey, I can just use 
square tubing for the anvil as well. It wouldn't, it doesn't matter. But then I, f I thought about it, like, no, I can't. Uh, and my friend Derek, who also has one of these, told me that it's not how it works. And if you think about it, when you're using an anvil, why do you use an anvil? Well, you want that rebound effect. Uh, it helps with the forging process. So, uh, the, uh, so th this is basically it. Get a hold of a solid steel, or maybe if you don't have a solid, uh, this large piece of solid steel, you can use smaller, long pieces of steel and weld them together so you get a solid piece of steel. So this is the anvil part. Let's move on. So here we have the, the motor arm system. So here is a threaded rod that's going down to the foot pedal. And if I press this down, what happens is that the arm goes like this. So the threaded rod comes here and I press down here, the arm goes up like this. And in the other end of the arm is the motor. And also here, I don't know if you can see this, but here we have a, a brake system, which is basically four threaded rods welded to a plate, which in turn is sitting on a welded plate that's welded onto the, the arm. So as soon as I release the foot pedal, this spring pulls the brake, which makes, makes it automatically stop as soon as I release the foot pedal. And you can also see when I press down the drive wheel of the motor, engages the the dry uh, the, the tire which makes the tire spin basically so how how big of a drive wheel do you need well there are figures for figuring out how 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 big of a drive wheel you need and how fast this ram will go the thing that's smart about the tire hammer is that you can you, if you don't press down it, it, there's a lot of control with with the foot pedal so you can make it move kind of slow actually and if you want to move, make it move really fast you press down all the way and it da, 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 da. so so yeah that's that's how that works to be honest i just uh, i just uh, get i just tried something and it worked so um, i i thought saw some pictures and i saw like uh, something like this and I didn't know how big that was, but I but I found a piece of steel and I had it lathe and uh, put on the as a dry wheel and it worked. So I was lucky, I guess. Right. So here you can see the the foot pedal, and I'll show you some close-ups without me in the in the frame. It's basically welded by a couple of pipes that I that I found on the farm. The rod is sitting here. It's bolted onto the foot pedal which in turn is bolted onto the main frame of the, of the hammer. Quite simple, actually. Uh, another thing that's very important uh, when making a hammer like this, for example, uh, the regular hammers are usually sitting on a solid plate of steel, quite thick, but I couldn't find anything and I didn't want to spend too much money on them, on buying a plate, so, but I got this piece of steel, a five centimeter thick piece of steel, which the anvil and the main body of the hammer is sitting on. And the important part is that the anvil, because the, the force and energy will go straight down here, so it needs to be thick here as well. So, so I welded on a couple of legs here, which sits under the steel plate, so they're also part of the main body. And I drilled holes here, and uh, I drilled through the concrete, and uh, I bolted it down in the concrete so it sits very sturdy. So I also have wood here under, you can see over there. And the wood is to slightly help uh, save the concrete floor. Uh, I don't exactly know the, how, how it works, but it, it's, like, it's like having wood under your anvil. It like, uh, helps with the, the energy down to the floor a little bit, I think. Not quite sure, uh, but it also it saves the floor basically. So when building a hammer like this, there there are a couple of things that you need to think about, like for example, how heavy do you want this to be, the ram to be? Uh, what are you going to use it for? For example, I am an axe maker primarily, but ha I have I have tried forging an axe on this a little bit. Uh, I might need a bigger hammer for that, or I haven't quite figured out how to do it yet. Like. It's important to understand that this is a whole new forging process, so you need to take that in account. It's gonna it's gonna be like starting forging again, a little bit like that, because it's a it's it's quite it, it takes a while to get used to it. So 
I started forging shoehorns with it. Worked super good, like smaller stock. I will show you a couple of videos here where, where I'm, I'm forging very small square bar. It just eats that away, no problem at all. And there's also, um, yeah, I'm gonna show you here, I'm forging 35 millimeter round stock. And it looks like not, that not much is not happening, but it actually is quite effective if you just heat the metal up uh, correctly. So here you can see, I don't know if you can see, uh, I mean, in two heats, almost reduced the, the size by half. So it's quite effective actually. So this ram weighs about 25, 22-ish kilograms, um, maybe around 45, 50 pounds, something like that. So you need to have that in account because you need a heavy spring if you're gonna have a heavy ram and everything else needs to be heavy. So. Are there things that I need to change about this hammer? Yes, there is. So one thing was the spring. Now I have changed it. Uh, another thing that I need to fi uh, fix is this is an I is an I beam. So I need to weld on more uh, pieces so that the I beam doesn't twist like this, which it could do in a while after a lot of heavy heavy use. So that's something that you need to think about. And it's also important to be very careful because this machine is quite dangerous if you don't know what you're doing and you never know if something's gonna come off. So talking about how much I spent on it, everything was given to me. Uh, because if you think about it, it was scrap laying around that they were going to throw away. Here comes a guy that's, that wants to take it from them and uh, they don't have to drive to the to the, uh, to the place where you get rid of metal. So that's basically a win-win situation. I was ready to pay for everything, but I didn't have to. Uh, some stuff that I got here, I, I gave them some coffee bread instead, and they were happy about that. Uh, the motor I also got for free, but a motor is not that expensive. It's a one horsepower motor or a 0 0.75 kilowatt motor. So in, and also inside the, the RAM holder here, there is a, a special type of plastic. I'll write it here because I don't quite remember what it's called, but it, it acts instead of pouring a lot of grease inside. So that's very good. So yeah, that's basically it. I spent around $100 on this hammer and I didn't think that was possible, but apparently it is. It was super fun to build it because each step you could see that another part of it was getting completed and you worked on a lot of small things but then you put those together and ah now i have the arm system for example or so i just start, i started out with just the base uh, the anvil and the the i-beam and the base plate that's how i started it out and then i started figuring out the arm system the how how the wheel was going to sit on i'll show you some pictures here and stuff like that and then putting everything together in the end that was such a wonderful feeling like oh i built this from nothing and now it helps me forge faster and do stuff that i couldn't do before so it was a super fun project and i'm super stoked about this hammer yes it needs a little bit of work but it's very good so i'm very happy about it and i hope if you want to build a hammer that you decide to do it by yourself. It's very fun. And if you have the time and the energy, please do it because you will be so stoked about, about it in the end. So thank you so much for watching the video. I hope I was of some help. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask them and I'll try to answer them to the best of my knowledge. And I also hope that this video got a little, because when I started, it, I didn't quite understand and most videos that they built the hammers were quite diffuse on how they built them, very fast through. It was hard to understand what each part did, how the arm system for for the ram and, and the motor worked and stuff like that. I hope I cleared that out a little bit. And if I didn't, please ask in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video and have a great time. Goodbye.